Welcome to the big th- 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 welcome to the big fun time podcast with my guest who I didn't check how to say your last name, but I'm going to attempt. Do you want to me to attempt? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Drew uh, Prakash. Prakash is my middle name. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's my dad's name. Well, I'm going on Facebook. So. Right. Right. And it, Aya? Yeah, Aya. Oh, yeah. yeah you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have even caveated yourself like no, that. No, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, I just, just shot myself in the foot. Yeah. Just took on it with full Trust confidence. Trust your instinct, man. Trust yeah. your instinct. Sick, dude. All right, cool. How you going? Yeah, good, man. Good good to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. That's all right. Um, yeah. I haven't done an episode of this in ages, and I'm trying to get more consistent. But in my defense, it was uh, illegal to... Um, interview anyone other yeah. than myself or bella mm. do you see i did an episode with me just me like oh, right. talking back and forth with oh right how'd not, that go oh i don't i have ptsd about that <laughs> <laughs> just like editing that was insane um cool all right we'll just get started do you want me, i'll ask you some questions okay sure okay cool beans um all right let's see uh so yeah it's gonna be a big question and then a, a, and then a fun question Define fun question and big like, question. Like, big is like sort of life, just questions oh, about okay. life and philosophy and stuff. And then fun question is kind of just like dumb stuff, you know, or more lighthearted stuff. Because the way I see it is like, you ask a big question, people get real deep and into it, and it's kind of more serious, maybe. It doesn't have to be, but it right. tends to be. And then you, you break that tension with a fun question. Like, okay. You know, what's your favorite Starburst? And you know, oh, okay. Why is it pink? You know. <laughs> right. Know. Okay. All right. Uh, first one. So you are quite a phys. Oh my god! You're quite a phys- philosophical. Right. Person. Okay. Would you ever write a book? Um. Yeah, I've tr- I've tried writing a couple books actually. Yeah. Um. I'm profoundly well. One was a novel, and I. I, I was really writing it just for fun, but um, I yeah I'm, I'm actually thinking about writing a book, but uh, and there's a there's a couple of different book ideas that I got actually, but I have to figure out. It's a lot of um, you got to really figure out details like that. Making decisions is the hardest part of um, writing. Yeah, and the more decisions you make earlier. Um, it's better for your story because you can plan it more, but you also have to try and give yourself freedom to change things later as well, especially with a novel. that like That's the biggest thing. It's like you can get like, well, I kind of, you can either plan it heaps so that you feel like you've given yourself enough chance to change your mind a lot, mm-hmm. or you just start writing and you got to try and do your best not to make too many big decisions so that like if you make a real big decision earlier then you decide... Uh, like 40 pages in that you want it another way then you gotta go back and change it that's what i have that's what happened to me yeah so uh i was like yeah all right so this other one i'm really trying to get the planning right so that I, that doesn't happen to me again because last time i was just like i'm gonna start writing it <laughs> i just started writing a book i got like 45 pages in. i'm not even joking. really and then i was like oh you know what i need to change the origin story of this whole yeah. this thing and then i has made me go back and you can do it in little chunks but then down the track, and then I got that like to like sixty pages, and then I stopped writing for a while. Then I completely changed as a person, and then I look back on it. And I was like, I've got to change this entire thing now. Yeah. And now I just got this yeah. poor shit. But so yeah, yeah this this one that I'm working on, I gotta I gotta I'm I'm also like I, I don't know if it's the right way to write or not, but I've got a kind of an agenda with it. Mm. so i gotta try and figure out how to either hide my agenda or like do it in somewhat a righteous way or whatever whatever it is so it's kind of yeah okay like, yeah what would the book what is it about uh the one i'm thinking about doing right now yeah um okay uh at the moment it's okay it's i've got a very loose universe for it and i've got a couple of different story options but it's not I've I've got a big hole in what's going to happen in it because, okay, so basically it's about, it's set in the far, far future. Yeah. And uh, it's set in a, like a, like a Star Wars type galaxy where the, it's a, it's a multi-planet 
civilization. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sounding like, a lot like Dune. <laughs> like, a, like a galaxy thing. Like, yeah. But uh, Dune. I haven't, Dune. Seen, I haven't seen Dune. Okay. All oh, right. All oh, right. Check it out. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. But basically, uh, so the the in this galaxy, there's a there's a I've, the the what my book's about is this particular group of people mm-hmm. that they find people like uh, Buddha or Jesus or Muhammad or people that like meet God mm. and are like prophets or like messiahs in the uh, civilization. Yeah. yeah. And he, they go to them and they go, they offer them a chance. Like you can either follow your path of like changing the world here, which you're trying to do, right? Which we're destined to do or whatever. Or you can come with us and we're like a group of these dudes and we just chill <laughs> and watch everything and ah. just, and just record a objective, history yeah because throughout the galaxy like there's empires falling and rising so history is always subjective and it's manipulatable because of that and then that's the whole that's the whole system of what how that works politically like you know manipulating the truth so the truth there's no truth out there there's just you know what you need to do to get ahead but then these guys just sit and they watch everything and they're just like oh yeah that guy did this and then that guy did this and then that guy just writing down and then there's like other little enclaves in the in the council in that in that like whatever you call it uh, monastery or I don't know what you want to call it. I haven't got a name for it yet. Said I don't want to make decisions. Yeah. So uh, uh, there'll be other little spaces in there where people just work on art or people just work on music or people mm-hmm. just work on this and people just work on that. Now my problem with this thing is these people have no drive to do anything there's, there's no goal mm. for these people they, they're, they're done with life they're just literally sitting there just chilling like enjoying it mm-hmm. so i have to make things happen to them so my only i've got two options for a story right now one i follow a kid who gets found by these people and bring him into the thing and then there's some corruption in the thing or something like that need or some drama yeah need some drama yeah. to make it a story and then this and then the second option is uh Various instances where someone who had, was like in control of the galaxy, whoever the current empire was, wanted to get these guys' authority because everyone knows these guys have the true account. Mm. So you can always go to them and actually see like... What's up? So this guy wants to like get in and like influence, like basically like... Um, what's that dude from uh, like Rupert Murdoch? He wants to Rupert Murdoch the fucking uh, council's yeah. writings. Do you know what okay, I mean? Like yeah. So that's, those are my two story options right now, but they're very weak. So I, so, yeah, so I, yeah, that's why I'm interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. I'd say. Uh, okay. Uh, it's a fun question. You, <laughs> I'm trying to put this as politely as I can. You are a, a, a self-proclaimed connoisseur of the devil's, devil's lettuce. Yes. Okay. Yes. Have you ever been so high that you couldn't walk? No. I have. <laughs> <laughs> no um i'll tell you what what with weed um, if you get really drunk and you have a smoke mm. and then you smoke you will pass out yeah really you will you will pass out yeah I, that's that's happened to me multiple times i've never you can get like it's not like you can't walk you, i've gotten to the point where i don't want to walk mm-hmm. a lot <laughs> and you'll just sit there and it's hard to want to get up but you can't you i have the I've never lost the ability to walk. Yeah. Okay. If that clarifies that. Yeah. In any way. Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, comedians like to paint themselves as like depressed, low lives, like kind of losers for some reason. Do you think that's like actually true? Ooh, good question. Like not, not like comedians like on Netflix. I'm talking like in the scene, I feel. And I feel like that's not just a Melbourne thing. That's like a... I don't know. I've seen that in a lot of different places. Mm. Um, well, first of all, when you say are they actually, what do you mean by that? No, uh, not are they actually, but do, do you believe that um, there's like truth to that or it's just this weird narrative that comics are trying to push because it's kind of part of like the struggling artist mentality right people are doing that you're 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 a big nba fan right yeah you know like mamba mentality yeah is kobe actually that 
Or did he need to be that? Or did basketball make him that? Or did he want to be that? Or did he... But you, it's a so combination of all of those things, right? Are you right? saying, like, you need to be You become depressed? what you think you need to be. Because, yeah. you're, because you, you, you're guided by what you want, right? Yeah. So, in your mind, you pick an identity. Yeah. And you go, I think that's me. You see something on TV and you're like, I think that's... The, that's where I belong. That's where I. That's why I need to be. Yeah. And you will naturally of whatever you want. There's a always whatever you pick. There's a vast spectrum of that. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to be a basketball player, you could be like Shaq, or you could be like. Kobe. There's a vast spectrum of the mentality that you might value and say that's what I want to. That's what I want to embody. Mm. But you will latch on to something, and you will go like and and there's not actually that many options of mentalities you can either be serious or you can be laid back or you can be uh, uh aggressive or you could be uh submissive or you could be there's not there's just a couple of you know polar there's only a few they're broken it down in psychology anyway but mm. like there's only a few traits that you can actually be so it's like every archetype of an identity would be a combination of those traits so you go so as a comedian and there's a lot it's a very pre- prevailing mentality among successful comedians and struggling comedians. It's like a, it's, there's a lot of people we admire who like, they could say like, uh, what's that dude? Stan Hope mentality instead of Mamba mentality, Stan Hope mentality. Yeah, and you just, yeah. you're like, you know what I mean? But, and people would might like that. And they think, and they go that I, I like, I value the something, whatever, whatever beauty you see in it. And then you want to embody that. So, I would say, yeah, they are actually like that because you, I mean, is Kobe actually like that? Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I think that's, that's different. I think he's adopting like a killer mentality to sort of fuel his um, motivation for his game. Whereas comics, I think it's an, it, like there's a positive thing for him, but I don't think it's a positive thing for a comic to be like, I need to be, you know, see myself as lesser. Well, like, can you be ripped and funny? Well, did you see the last dance? Yeah. Being that way has negatives too. To the point where you're playing, to where you're playing coins with a security guard. Yeah. And you're like, you know what I mean? It's the, the, there's always going to be a trade off of Mm -hmm. what, but you've already decided in your head the result of what it's going to get you is worth the baggage that I'm yeah, going to carry. Yeah, it's worth like... So, and and, and to be funny, you kind of need to be a contemptuous asshole. <laughs> like, you have to kind of be... You're going to have to look at shit and be like, Ugh, like, that's yeah. funny. So, yeah. so, even if it's yourself... Or if it's something outside, like it's always a negative thing. Mm. So it's the yeah. soup we decide to swim in. Yeah. You know, in exchange for that laugh, I gotta do I gotta go here. Yeah. For you to laugh at it. Yeah. And I think that's like what Jerry Seinfeld uh said on the Tim Ferris podcast where he's like, You gotta be uh like grumpy and like irritable about stuff at least a little bit and you got to protect that reaction to things because it's like the source of a lot of I'll, I'll go a lot further than jerry Sanford. you need a a, a a burning bonfire of rage yeah. in your gut to yeah. be a comedian yeah that's what you need and no amount of kombucha no douse. yeah <laughs> not not that yeah and you got to be like Pouring a little bit of kerosene on it every yeah. day. Like, you need to be, like, feeding it. Yeah. That's what a good comic... That's why, like, successful comics, like, they put out a couple good specials and then it gets hard because, like, bro, I'm happy now. Yeah, <laughs> I have all my needs met. And and, and, and every so, comedian, that's yeah. the other thing, like, you'll notice, like, people ask comedians, now that you're happy, isn't it harder to be funny? And they'll always be like, nah, I don't think yeah, that's true. Yeah. Bill Burr said it to you in a recent interview. He's like, yeah, nah, I don't think that's true. But look at his last couple of specials. Like, yeah. Like, it's, yeah. And it's not a bad thing. I still love listening to the special because he doesn't have anything to prove to me anymore. I don't need him to be punchy like that. But, yeah. But... You to get the punch like that, you need to really, you need to hit you hit me in the gut. To hit me in the gut, you need to hit yourself in the gut. Yeah, you need to, you need to hit the world. You need to be mad at the world, bro. It's like um, I heard a quote. It was like relatability, like brings success, but success kills relatability. Yeah, you just get to like yeah a level. I still think like I don't know. 
you can avoid that totally if you just don't buy a mansion. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you think? Yeah, but it's tough, bro. You get, it's tough. You get like, keep looking like, at those mansions like, fuck. Whoa. First of all, first of all, like everyone, especially you see this a lot in the NBA, like people get mad at what they like. They're like, oh, oh look yeah. at this dude. They're spending money on these cars and this thing. Dude, do you, do you know what, do you know what $100 million is? <laughs> do you know how hard it is to spend a hundred million? What are you yeah. going to buy? What the hell can yeah. I buy? Yeah. I got to, I have, what am I going to get? That's so much. In, uh, That's so much money. It's just what like you, you could go get? out on the town for weeks and not put a dent in that. Like you could. Uh, and dude, all of them are giving to charity. They're like, give it away to charity. They are, they are giving it yeah, away. Yeah, it's all, just so they're much. They're all giving away a lot in charity. Like they're trying hard. <laughs> I can't save these kids quick enough. Yeah, bro, just... LeBron built a whole school. Yeah. Like, He's still like a billionaire. Yeah. Like they have uh. so much. When you get to that much money, bro, no, there's nothing else. What do you What do you want me to do with it? Like, yeah. just sit on it. Like, what, yeah. what do you want me to? Yeah, man. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. It It's like, what would my, you do with it, bro? Well, what, what would your answer be? My dad always said, like, don't let money burn a hole in your pocket. Like, don't let it like sit there and and you feel like it needs to be spent. But I don't know. I feel like if it's not being used it's useless you know what i mean dude the bl- the blueprint's already there you just listen to what nba players say what are they what do they all say they're going to do when they get rich yeah they buy their mama house and stuff that's what you want to do right yeah that's what i want to do right that's what everyone wants to do yeah i want to buy my mama house yeah that's and then Take after that it's like yeah some cool toys for me but then i'll eventually get a girl and i'll get married and then it'll be about my kids that's mm. what everyone does anyway yeah. like that's what I don't think that's a bad thing, but it's, I, I don't know. It, in terms of like comedy, it kind of, uh, Jerry Seinfeld says if you get married, it, it brings back a lot of that irritability. And then if you have kids, that's like. Hates. No, you, you, you have plenty of reasons to keep irritable, bro. Yeah. It's, the only reason you will stop being irritable is if you want to stop. Yeah. See, Jerry can put up with the irritability. He can be like, I can, I'm going to live with this because it's getting me laughs and it's getting me this, it's getting me that. But there's a lot of negatives to being that way. Mm. First of all, what we talked about earlier about how we think of ourselves, yeah. how our mental states are, and also if you want to be in a relationship and have a family, it's not easy to live with a person like that. Mm. It's 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 annoying. It's it's it, I'm literally pouring kerosene on my bonfire of rage every day, <laughs> and you have to live with me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm and I'm trying to maintain this. Yeah. And it's you're like, like Bill Burr's uh, wife, that poor woman. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? And 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 Bill Burr has had to put his fire out. If you notice, yeah. he's had to be like, you know what? I don't want to be this. I gotta chill. I don't. I, <laughs> I, I don't want to be this anymore. I want to. Yeah. And because first of all, bro, it's not fun either. Like I don't want to be. Do you know? Yeah. Um, Izzy just told me the story the other day. Like Mike Tyson, apparently he um someone uh, he told some other celebrity or something. But Mike Tyson said before every fight he would cry in the bathroom. Before every fight. Mike Tyson. Really? You know that dude, Mike Tyson? Yeah. He would cry in the bathroom before every fight. And he was like, why did you... You're the world champ. Why would you... Yeah. He was like, because I hated being that guy. Oh, I, yeah. I've, I hated that clips. I had to yeah, be that guy podcasts. to go out there and it really messed do him up. that. Really, you know what I mean? Yeah. So success, first of all, the first uh, misunderstanding that people make Success and happiness are the opposite sides of the coin. Literally, if you land mm. on one, the other one's covered on the on the back. You're not you. Yeah. You're sacrificing one for the other. Yeah. Do you understand? Because happiness means I don't need to do anything. I'm cool right here. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you need anything, bro? Nah. No, That's happiness. Good. Yeah. Right. Right. So that means that mentality means I don't do anything. I'm I'm not going to get success. Mm. If I want success, the mentality needs to be: What do you need, bro? I need the world. I need, what I have is never enough. Mm. I'm always need that more, one more. Uh, Michael Jordan, five rings, not enough, right? Yeah. To get, in order to get the sixth, you got to be that way. That makes you miserable because you're never gonna enjoy what you got. You're never gonna sit in this moment and be like, "I'm good." Yeah. You can't. You're not allowed to say that. Yeah. So Doesn't it's get your ring. It's it's success and happiness are just are so, you know. But but what we're talking about before about rage though. J- Jerry Seinfeld, also, it's easier for him because it also depends where your rage comes from. Mm. If your rage comes from a real unhealthy place, man, it's hard to maintain and you eventually yeah. you eventually get real hateful and real... But if you let it keep it at like... Like Jerry Seinfeld just has like contempt for behavior and little activities 
And I don't think it interferes with his in his the essence of his belief in people or his yeah. his love of things. Yeah. So it doesn't harm his his life. Core sort of yeah, of, his core yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I think if you, it depends where your anger comes from, like that. But mm-hmm. uh, it, and it's a balancing act. And bro, it's you don't come, you can't come out of it unscathed. Like if you if you want to get in the gladiator arena, mm. you're gonna get something. Yeah, you're gonna yeah, get you're gonna get course. something. You're gonna get you're gonna get something. You just you're not coming out unblemished like that. You yeah. can't ask for both. You can't ask for I want to be unblemished and I want to be in the in the arena and get the glory, get the cheer. Because the thing is, people don't cheer for you unless you're risking that. Mm. Unless you're risking the blemish, they don't care if you don't get the blemish. But you got to be risking it. And that's when people are like, all right, he's got something on the line. If Evil Knievel was about to jump off like over the Grand Canyon yeah. and he'd definitely die. Yeah. I'm watching it. <laughs> like, yeah. you, this has got to be yeah. stakes. Yeah. So if I'm just sitting here doing something and I'm like, I want to do it where I, I have no risk to me and I have a pleasant life. Who is watching that? Yeah. Who is watching you? Just have a pleasant. It's not. It's not fun. No. So there's got to be some juice to it. Yeah. yeah. So when you want to, when you when you pick any of these, athlete, entertainer, when you pick these things of, I'm gonna be in front of people's eyes for a living. Mm. You better put yourself at risk every day, every time, and that kills you slowly because you have to do that. Like you have yeah. to. Yeah. As you have to cry in the bathroom. But yeah. you might get a hundred million dollars. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's why people do it, but... We're going to take a quick uh, quick uh, commercial break, ad break, <laughs> and we're going to be right back with more um, bonfire rage. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, Isaac here. I just wanted to thank today's sponsor, Vegetables. Uh, you got to eat them. I mean, <laughs> you don't, well, you don't have to, but yeah, if you don't, I'm coming after you, okay? <laughs> okay? Uh, good stuff. All right, back to the podcast. And I, I uh, had, well, that's the thing. If you see the forecast, it's like all rainy. But the last couple of weeks, I only noticed when they say it's rainy, it's actually very sunny. And I told my brother this because I heard this conspiracy theory. And I don't usually go for conspiracy theories, but this one, this one was pretty good. It's that the government is controlling the news forecast for the weather, telling everyone it's going to be rainy and shit so they don't book anything um so to keep people you know not doing shit still during right. the COVID time oh you know what I mean? okay it's not touching each other at the golf course and shit oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? interesting but then it, it's sunny you know but that's that's just a theory i don't know but it's uh i mean it's juicy unfortunately <laughs> the the, uh, the thing that disproves that theory is you'd have to be that mean that would mean the weather was 100 percent right every time before that yeah yeah that's and the that, biggest flaw in it yeah just destroys the whole conspiracy yeah everyone's dude i've seen the weather be wrong for like weeks on end bro like yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, literally, they're literally they're literally like it's gonna be raining and it's like it's sunny and they're like it's gonna be raining tomorrow though i know it's gonna be raining tomorrow no it's still sunny it's gonna be raining to the next day then we, yeah. we, we're we seeing this thing it's coming and then it's sunny again they're like you know what fuck it it's sunny tomorrow then it starts raining and then they're like you know what bro they start flipping coins bro they start just like flipping yeah, a coin on tv yeah but like, it's 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 fun. It's fun to to not, you know, <laughs> isn't it fun? Oh, it's like they're controlling everything, and I can prove it. Um, all right, here's a fun question. Uh, this is actually a very wow. This lines up really perfectly with what we've been talking about. Uh, what is a grievance you have with something people in society do? Like oh, I love the word grievance. Good question. If you'd asked me that two, three years ago, I'd have had a long list. Yeah. Uh, You've got to chill, chilled out now? Yeah, I, dude, I literally have no grievances. Yeah. I have no grievances. No with. little, like, uh, I hate when people, like, fucking do it. It can be, like, like dumb or it can be no, not and politically I, correct. And I'm not, and I'm, not trying like to co- little... I'm, not, I'm not trying to cop out either because I'm very much the type of person to list my grievances. mm very much so. I, I love lifting grievances. It's like one of my favorite things. It's actually sad that I've lost the ability to do it now. <laughs> but like, I, like I was like, well, it used to be one of my favorite things. And mm. I, I, okay, I, okay, I still, I still, got, I guess I still got a couple. Gr- I say, I would say, this is gonna sound somewhat corny, but 
if you really listen to what I'm saying, I'm actually it's actually quite a harsh thing to say, but I'm I I'm annoyed at how little effort people put into to looking at themselves the right way and understanding themselves the right way and how much they let that misconception or the or the or the it, the lack of clarity in that mm. affect the rest of the world. And what do you define as the right way? As they are. Yeah. Yeah. Like not enough self reflection. Too many, just too much uh, judgments and statements and expectations on top of things. And I understand where it comes from. It's not a, it's not a mistake we're making. It's mm. just a natural. Um, it's the it's a natural byproduct of having an ego because your ego is designed to separate things out into two categories. So either it's helpful or it's harmful. Mm. And you're designed to look at the world like that. You're designed to go, ooh, it's a tiger. Is it helpful or is it harmful? Yeah. Right? Like, is, is, yeah. there, is it in the zoo? All right. Yeah. If it's not in the zoo, I, I'm yeah. running. <laughs> yeah. So, but when you, the problem with humans is we've come to a point, we still ha- we still need it because you still need to like, you know, watch out for things, watch out for people. Yeah, still- some people earn that. You know, some people, you know, some people don't, but we, you can let it overrun Yeah. into yeah. thinking the government's controlling the weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. then protesting it and then getting on my ass for not protesting it. Yeah. And then like just, and, and, and you can see it, it gets very, like even the whole environmental thing. Now this is not going to be popular, but like saving the earth, we're trying to save the earth. Mm. The, isn't the sun gonna eat the earth? Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. What? I thought this the other day. Actually, I kind of thought like we're what? all screwed anyway. You might as well have a fun ride. So, so really, it's not save the earth. So then it, it, they say maybe it's save the animals. Yeah, animals. Well, I'm not out there strangling turtles. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. uh, you know. But but nature. See the the whole environmental thing is such a just a fear of death. Yeah. Thing. Right? Yeah. It's a it's a this thing's not gonna last thing. Right. Yeah. And Nothing we can't even else. make an ant immortal, but we want to make the whole earth immortal. Yeah. But see, and and the it's so obvious to me. Like when you're a kid, right? When you watch any cartoon, blatantly, blatantly, they're right there for us. The villain is the one who pursues immortality. Mm. Yeah, Thanos snapped the half the universe. Every so that we every could every longer. villain, Freezer. Yeah. Every villain mm. is going for immortality. The hero dies. He's like, I'm, I'm good dying. Mm. <laughs> there's a, there's a message in that. Like, yeah. the point is not to fucking try and live a hundred years and then, oh no, how do I keep this going? Like, yeah, what is the, what is your, it's never gonna, you're never gonna be able to keep it going for. What do you mean for infinity? What are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, it's, exactly. It's, there's, it's gonna have a, you can get it really long, but it's still gonna yeah. be, and it's. What is, it's so, it's the same shit every time, like everywhere is going to be the same thing every time. Like what is this higher level? People always go like, um, aliens, oh no, they're not, they're not here because we're not smart enough to be at that level over that. Like, what is it possibly that aliens could know or could be doing that at a higher thing than yeah. what we're doing? It's just survival. And that's all it can be is yeah. survival. That's all you can really see. If I uh, assess my needs right now, right, mm. it's either a sandwich, some water, or some sleep, mm-hmm. and if I've got all that covered, reasonably long term, maybe a woman and some children. Now that's all I can really need, and that's all I can really do. Like yeah. there's nothing more. Yeah, I so can- like outside of every, outside of all those things, uh, you know, ev- everything's just optional. Everything else. Everything else is interchangeable. Everything else is... Even all that stuff. Even, like, the woman part's optional. Mm. Uh, You know, food, you can... You can drag it up, drag it down. Like, you can eat very bare minimum. It's a... It's a... You know... I can't remember what the original question was. (laughs) But, uh... Grievances! Oh, yeah. Drove. Yeah, okay. Grievances. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. That's right. Little... Big... Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So that's my grievance. That's really my only grievance. Oh, is, is, lack is, of self reflection in yeah, society. Not even that. Because I, see, first of all, it's for it to be a grievance, I have to. It's not really a grievance because I understand why they're doing it. And I know they're not. You've mm. got to know better to do better. So it's like you can't. 
to say it's a grievance that means you're expecting them to be doing they're doing something that they're supposed to be doing and they're not doing it I, I i don't agree with that but if i was to if it, what we look at at the world and say problems in the world children are hungry um you know people are dying you know single mums or like whatever we look at at the world and go oh suffering mm. right i just the 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 um Cr the, those problems are created by perspective. Mm -hmm. They're not actually. The world can't go in the wrong way or the right way. Oh, the world's going the wrong way, bro. You noticing what's happening? It can't. It it it's just it's going out the way. It goes. You you, you can't be. I don't understand the arrogance of being able to say. Like, I just got here yesterday. Clearly, all these people have been here longer than me. There's been many people doing it. But I just got here yesterday. This is broken. Mm. And I need a... This, is, this needs to be fixed. What's going on here for billions of years. Even without humanity. And we're just like... So... And you ask the dude, what's the point of this? And they're like, I don't know the point. But you're saying it's broken. It's like walking into a factory and yeah. being like... That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. And the dude coming up to me and being like, "Why? I don't know." Yeah, it doesn't make any what, sense. What, you know what we make here? No, uh, but that's wrong. That doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. Why are you? What are you judging this off? Oh, I got traumatized as a child, and that's making me feel weird. Um, I'm scared of this thing, so that's making me. No, no, no. This is a. We make rivets. Mm. Can you? This needs to be here, right? So the same thing goes for the universe. It's here for some reason. Just because you don't know it doesn't mean shit like it's happening you until you know that reason you have no authority to be like it's broken yeah exactly so exactly. and that includes the horrific shit whether you like it or not you, you're not the one who gets to decide so holocaust yeah yeah holocaust yeah slavery yeah the volcano erupting and killing everything everyone mm. the dinosaurs the meteor every yeah yes you don't get it that's why you think it's wrong mm. that that's my grievance well, if, if you're wondering, mine is I hate it when people play music on the bus, <laughs> <laughs> on the train, playing Skrillex and shit. Uh, Just turn it down. You know what I mean? There's other people. Do you know? Do <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a funny story. There was a lady on the bus. Uh, there was a lady on the um, train the other day. Well, this was kind of a while ago. But I sat opposite her, hmm. and she was listening to some music. Like, like it was, she, she had a, not on her headphones, it was like some kind of gospel or some kind of, like some kind of music. And then like I sat across from her, she wasn't too worried, but then like this family of Chinese people came in and they mm. just started talking and they had two young kids. So they were like bustling around the young yeah, kids, yeah, yeah. just talking and stuff. And they're in the corner. This lady just picks up a Walkman and just starts singing this song out loud, like, like this and closes her eyes and like this, yeah. just starts singing like this. Like she's like. Like try and then she looks around, sees which we're still talking and this, and then she goes, oh, no, 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 no. Like, That's a grievance. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's not I I mean, I don't know what's going on. I look, it's obviously much more awful in her head than what I'm experiencing from this. Mm. So I, I don't have a grievance against her. But it's just well, it's yeah. like uh, my girlfriend's always teaching me about like understanding and uh, you know, when you look at people in public and they're acting weird, you're supposed to come at them with a level of like understanding as to why they'd be acting like that. And that sort of makes you feel more compassion than anything else. But yeah, when people are just clearly being a dickhead and like, you know, like teenagers now and yeah, I feel so old, you know, when I'm on the train and teenagers come on and start, you know, using like the handles as monkey bars and shit. I'm just like, I, f I don't want to be like, <laughs> stop it, you little whippersnappers. But God damn it, I've thought about... No, you are right. I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, man. It's when so a homeless dude just starts going off near you and you're like, really? Yeah. Now, today? Yeah, come on. I'm on my way and man. you got to do this now. And now I've got to be like around you, watching you, making sure you yeah. don't fucking... I want to look out the window of the train, but lately I've just had to like put headphones on, eyes down, you know, don't make eye contact because... Yeah. Because, I don't know, you never know if someone's going to just flip their shit. <laughs> um, the train is a weirdly, like, like public transport is a weirdly, it's very public. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Emphasis yeah. on the public. Um, next question. Big. Qu this is a big question. Uh, what's left to 
Um, Hang on. That, my list of grievances was a little question? That was a fun question. Oh, really? There's no little questions. Wow. Right. Fun question. Okay. Yeah. Because it's supposed to be something you get like, oh. No, I was supposed to make that funny, wasn't I? I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. I took it seriously. I took it like a serious question. I should, right. You can take it anyway. I should have had, I should have had a bunch of... Um, anyway. No, I should put an asterisk next to the yeah. fun because it's just like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you can really take it any way you want. Sure. Uh, what? Yeah. What's left to do in your life? It's kind of... A, that's a big one. No. Oh. And you don't have to know, obviously. Um... Because you probably don't. Well, no I, well, I, well, I mean, look, I do know. So, I mean, I knocked a big one off the list, like mm -hmm. uh, the bit, the top of the list, the, mm -hmm. the main one off, and I really can't complain if that's all I get. So, I'm in that respect, I'm really done. Like, mm -hmm. I really feel like I could die happy at the moment because um, I've achieved what I wanted to. I, I got what I wanted to out of life. Mm. Um. There's a couple more. There's really two experiences that I haven't had yet that uh, I would that would be new experiences for me, and that that's having children mm -hmm. and uh, dying. So obviously, I got to try and do one before the other. I would one, say one there's an gets order. In the way. To one kind of gets in the way of the other one. So um, I'm trying to decide whether um, whether I'm gonna that's gonna make it on the I'm, I'm trying to decide whether that's an experience that i want to have enough to commit to that because it's a big it's a big commitment dying no but having kids uh, yeah, yeah. no having kids <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah no. both really yeah, yeah, i mean I but i mean death is less of a commitment yeah then you could just wait <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> you know I mean? so yeah. yeah i think those two definitely um there's a lot to i i mean if i was to get in a like I don't e even want to be in any relationship with a woman unless I'm going to have kids. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't even entertain it. Like I yeah. feel like it's a waste of time. But uh, uh, no, no offense, bro. By the way. No, like, that's it. That's you're totally the, up you're, to you. You're 24 though. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, 29. Yeah. I'm, that's why. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. So I, I would. Yeah, I would. Uh, that's that's kind of what I'd feel like. As far as um, like career, I don't really. Yeah, I'm in a weird place with a career at the moment. I'm 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 very fulfilled and I it's a tough uh like I told you, man, I got happiness. Mm. Yeah. And so it's hard for me now to try and be get yeah. uh, get that success mentality and and have it be have some oomph to it because I'm like, well, really it's like my one side of me is like, work bro, go do some writing, go do some gig. I'm 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 really I'm happy though here. Like I'm happy. Yeah. Not even like a fear thing or like, like stand up's fun too. And I do, and that's why I, like I had a gig last night, and but yeah, it's a tough thing to. And then the other side, that's why the kid thing comes in, is because like I really need to. I'm one of those people where if I was to have kids, I would want to do it the right way and be stable and mm -hmm. be, you know what I mean? Like not put them through a hurricane of fucking instability and which yeah. is an artist life you got to get a backyard before you get the dog you yeah know? you know what i mean yeah. i mean you don't have to but I, that's the way i feel like doing it so mm. that's good that's very good um this actually relates to something we just said uh so you're 29 and i'm 24 so i was i was born in 1997 mm -hmm. what was the early 2000s like <laughs> What was the early 2000s like? Because like 90s, I don't know if you'd know. Yeah. But mm. it's kind of, they kind of leak into. Yeah, 90s. Know. 90s. Um, yeah, 90s for me, it was, like I'm still turning on in the 90s basically. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, it, but it was still, and uh, like 90s is like, the, the reason why you can't really do anything in your first 10 years, you can't really tell the decade in your first 10 years is because everything is what it is for the first time. You, yeah. There's no reference. Yeah, yeah, you can't compare. You can't, you can't go. Oh, this is different to the '80s. It's yeah. just, oh, this is what it is. This, this is, is the, the first. Thing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, '90s for me was a big shock. Like it was moving from India to New Zealand. I moved to New Zealand in '97 mm -hmm. when you were born, so uh, I couldn't speak English. Mm -hmm. um, it was a big shifting, and I was moving back and forth a lot. And there's like, yeah, but early 2000s. I was starting to get, we were shifted to New Zealand and I was into the thing and I started becoming part of the thing. So I'd say to early 2000s, New Zealand, 
Yeah, it was basically probably like the 1980s, probably, or the 1970s over here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in a small country town, like, it's yeah, like, it was... Yeah. I mean, I almost want to say the early 2000s might have been the peak of the American empire. Yeah. The, it was, a, it was like real peace, real, real peace. I mean, 9-11 was the most heinous thing that happened. Uh, America, still America's still been lying. fucking around in the Middle East for since the seventies, basically. Yeah. So it's kind of been an ongoing thing. But they did do the whole world war on terror thing. But it wasn't. It the early two thousands didn't. I don't know if it's because I've grown up, mm. but the early two thousands didn't have the vibe of menace that this decade has had. Mm. The twenty tens have had a vibe of um, urgent danger. Yeah, that the two thousands was not really like that, uh, as far as I remember it. I, I I'm a little bit biased because I'm young. I'm in school. It's kind of like that for kids. Life's kind of like that for kids. But the news wasn't like that heavy like that. Like, and, and it was still the. It was when uh, TV had been properly wrangled by the. So TV wasn't spewing like the seventies was more like this decade mm -hmm. because they hadn't wrangled TV yet. So journalists were like going over to Vietnam and like filming burning bodies in the streets and like babies and shit. So people were like, oh, it's, the hell's going on? And there was conspiracy theorists and everyone mm. was protesting stuff. By the 90s and the 2000s, they'd wrangled that. The, the, the TV really got wrangled in mm. the, uh, the 90s and the 2000s, whereas in the 70s, it was more open. So, yeah. so like but we calmed down because of that level of panic wasn't there on our screens as much. There was still, but the news does it in a different way. They don't. Yeah. They didn't do it the way, like, say it's the change. Like, for example, the internet is that thing now. Yeah. It's unwrangled. Yeah. And you get to see, you know what I mean? And then that's, yeah. that causes the, the type of pan, because there's, it's like, it's like, um, unspun, um, un, uh, angled or, or extremely over angled. And then everyone's just like pitching it. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a different. So the internet's moved into that. So then, we, I would say this 2010s was more is more activist. We're in our activist state. Like the 50s was like that. The 70s was kind of yeah. like that. The um, the 80s, 90s were kind of cool. 2000s, but that was the it was kind. 80s was kind of 80s was kind of like that too, but in a more domestic way for America, really, rather than overseas. But and people still kind of just get their handle together still, but. Yeah, so, yeah, early 2000s, it's also when young people completely took over uh, mainstream. Mm. Mainstream used to still be, in the 90s, mainstream used to still be the domain of adults. Mm. Like, okay. the number one box office movie will be for adults. Yeah. The number one, the number one um, oh, yeah, true. like, yeah. Fight Club, that type, yeah. those type of movies, uh, Saving Private Ryan... Those those movies that like good we we were still trying to entertain old people and adults and have some like class to it music as well all that yeah then in two thousands we took over kids just took over yeah we just took over everything music especially um, I think. movies everything music yeah. Yeah, all all the mainstream entertainment just got taken over at, because that's where the dollar is we're the ones who are going to watch it fifty times we're the ones yeah, who are going to watch yeah. music uh, you can sell toys to us you can sell merch to us. We're the ones that get movement started. So, whereas Fight Club, people who watch Fight Club, they're going to be like, oh, great movie, man. Did you watch Fight Club? That's it. Watch it one time and then yeah. talk about it. And that's it. So, yeah. So, that, yeah. That, that, I would say that's the 2000s. Is, yeah. I would, yeah. I kind of like it a bit more than this era. Although, this, I don't know. I, I always kind of disagree with people that say like, oh, I wish I'd lived in this era or this era. Because it's like, this is the newest one. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, only more exciting shit can happen from yeah. here. You yes. Know? Yeah. Um, that's a big question. Uh, so I, I don't know what you do for work. Do you do? I don't have a job at the minute, but I've, I've normally between odd jobs. Yeah. Just um, and trying to do stand up and yeah, man. this and that. But that's the vibe. Yeah. I used to, yeah, I used to do heaps of odd jobs and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, do you have any now that you've sort of reached this uh, period, like this, you've reached happiness and you don't really have. I guess too many things that you need. It's not, it's not, the question is not, do you need more money? It's more like, would you pursue more money? Cause my, for example, my older brother is very, 
I guess, in the pursuit of, of, uh, money and stuff. And that's fine. Um, but yeah, do you see yourself like, obviously you don't need it, but like, would you want to ever tr- like, just try to like, I've been getting into cryptocurrency and, and shit yeah. and down and I just find it fascinating just trying to make more money, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, How do you see it? I mean, I, if you, if people really, uh, when people look at rich people and they go, Oh, they're manipulative or this, that, it's really, they're all people who just fell in love with that game. Yeah. It's a, it's a fun game to people. Where, yeah. Where, and, and the ones who really make money, they don't even look at it as money. They, they're, it's really like a score. Yeah. Like on a, on a video game. And they're yeah, like, can I, I be my high score? Can I get, you know, yeah. can I keep going? And those are the people who love it. And yeah. for me, Unfortunately, unfortunately for my parents, for my family, money game it never was interesting to me, and it, it just never was a. But but it, it, I mean, it's a it's a game I can get interested in, but it's I go, again going back to the previous thing, I would have to have kids incentivizing it, yeah. and then at that point I'm yeah. definitely because I told you I I want stability, so yeah, so yeah. it would be a game that I have to pay attention to and start getting and start trying to love, and I think yeah. I could. Um, it's but oddly it would, addictive, I would need that. I think. Yeah. Because it's exciting. Like, like when I started getting into crypto and stuff, it's exciting. Just like when your money makes money and stuff. And like, I never thought that I could get to this level, like sort of thing. And then you get to like a higher level and then it goes down and you start panicking and shit. <laughs> but right. like, right. it's, it's a weird thing. And I, I, was always someone who thought money is just a tool to get what I sort of need to help facilitate what I want to do, which will lead to like happiness, but it's nothing more than that. And I don't buy expensive shit. You know what I mean? I don't buy anything that I don't really need. Like most of my stuff is secondhand Mm. and, uh, but it is just kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of fun. It's kind of like gambling, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Like even getting into stocks and stuff, it's yeah. kind of the same uh-huh. f- feeling as gambling. 100%. Yeah. Money, money is, money's not nothing, but it's also not everything. It's, it's, it's money is, um, money is your, money is your ability to buy other people's time. Yeah. Money is time. That's why they say time is money, but it's, because you only have 24 hours in your day. So you trade your time for uh, something that's representing time so that you can trade that for someone else's time that you don't get to spend on that. So I can't grow, for example, yeah. if I want to be a comedian, I can't grow food all day. I have to work on my comedy. So I trade my comedy for money, which represents time, which then I can trade for uh, old mate's tomatoes because yeah. that's what he spends on his time so because i can't grow tomatoes so he gives me tomatoes and then yeah. but he can't he has no time to make comedy so then he can give me his time money yeah. for my comedy yeah. so so it's it, it's it, interesting it, yeah it's all just time isn't it it's uh, that and that's why like um all uh progress is, is free time like technological progress is all the, the reason why it's good is because it frees up time yeah so because uh if you have no technology, it takes four or five people to do that same job of growing yeah, tomatoes. Yeah. So if now you only need one person to grow the tomatoes, now those five people can be other things. So that's where comedy came to exist. But we didn't even have comedy to begin with, right? Mm. But we ended up getting so much spare time. Extra dudes were lying around and they were like, hey, dude, you're actually kind of funny. Like, work on that. Mm. And that would be something I'm willing to trade my leather or whatever. <laughs> For your yeah. comedy, right? Yeah. So, and and I want my comedy too. Like I want my because I'm sacrificing my. If if, um, if everyone, we could go back to a place where everyone took care of their own stuff. Like mm. you play your own music, but you grow your own tomatoes, and you wouldn't need to rely on anyone. No, but yeah. I would miss out on like Drake. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Like do you get what I mean? Like yeah. if I can master the one thing mm. that I do, then that would allow me to enjoy the mastery of everything oh, else. Yeah. And it, then and then the thing has and then that's why also back in the day we don't we frown upon that now, but there's a reason why they had that old system of like if you're a blacksmith, guess what your son's doing? Like Yeah. We yeah. and it's because that's how smithing gets better. Yeah. Is because you've got two generations of building off the thing. 
and then getting into the next thing and into the next. So then you're actually furthering the. That's why they used to have that. It's not as important anymore because we've got so many extra people, mm. so much extra time because. So. Yeah, I couldn't imagine doing what my dad does. My dad's a mechanic. Like, right. I don't know. I ask him stupid questions like, "What happens if I put a banana in the exhaust pipe?" And he's yeah. Like, it's not yeah good. See, there would have been a time where <laughs> mechanics were so rare. Yeah. That it's like, no, bro. There's literally no one else. You have to be the mechanic. Yeah. Because we don't have enough time. Yeah. To like, your dad already has. You've got all the shortcuts. Yeah. Right. That's and all it is. You're already it's living shortcuts. with it. So yeah. we need you to save time by just being a mechanic and keeping it in your family. Then once, sh- once you get extra people, and first of all, when you only need two or three mechanics, you know, like, or you're getting multiple mechanics, or you know that that number that number. Um, uh, becomes a surplus of for the demand. Then I was like, okay, well, you know what? There's enough mechanics doing it. It's not like we yeah, need it. Yeah. So now let me go do this where I see a gap over here, and I think I could do this. So I'll yeah. go over here. And I do guess it. that's that's privilege a little bit, isn't it? The 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 privilege to not have to follow in your uh, father or whoever's footsteps. Yeah, but it's your environment it. that allows. Yeah. It. It's not is... it's not down to anything oh, yeah, other true. than that. It's your environment. Like, yeah. if there's technology in your environment that saves the time, yeah. then I don't have to do yeah, it. Do That's it. the it. It actually pushes you out. Like, it, there's already like uh, robots and stuff taking over people's jobs, right? And people mm. go, "Oh no!" Like, do you really want to be a cashier? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Why do you want to be a cashier? I'm so angry. You know, go yeah. be a writer. Yeah. Like, we don't need cashiers anymore. No. Nah. Go do something else. There's like, more there's, need for you is this thing that you now, sort of want to I, I, I swear to God, bro, 20 years, bro, we're just going to be donating to each other's Patreons. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. The whole world is just going to be, I have my podcast, you have your podcast. Yeah. Machines do everything for this us weird, and we're just listening to each other. Sub- form of communism <laughs> where just, everyone's just propping each other up. It won't even be communism. It'll just be unlimited... The robots just make food yeah. and water and everything. And you just get to sit here and just be like, what do you Sweet. want to do? Music, sport, or art? Like it's, it's also going to come down to. Yeah. Because that's where you got the time. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's going to do us. Easy, um, bro. Very nice. Thank, Thank you very much for having me, No man. worries. Thanks for coming yeah, on. I had a fun uh, time. This is the, the big fun time podcast uh, official poster. <laughs> uh, I just, I can print it again, but I love how shit this one came out. So, yeah. Yeah, um, great. Uh, do you have anything to plug? Do you see your, your um, Gorilla, uh, December 1st, featuring a gorilla, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, you got um, that feature spot. Show up, if, if whoever's listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. Gorilla. Yeah. It's like a good burgers, yeah. good shakes, good yeah. comedy. Great burgers. Yeah. Horrible mic. Great burgers, yeah. though. Great burgers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The funds, hey, you know, if it can only go one way. You can't have everything. No, you can't exactly. Have everything. Yeah, sweet. All right. All right, man. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Thanks. No Take worries. care.